In this video, we're going to take a look at the special case of a discontinuity. So we're going to start off with a first order equation of this form, y plus 2y, uh, y prime plus 2y is equal to g of x. But g of x is different on different intervals. For example, for the interval between uh, x is greater than 0 but less than 1, we have g of x is equal to 1. And for all other x greater than 1, g of x is equal to 0. So we have two cases that we have to deal with. So let's solve the first one. The first one is our typical problem that we've been looking at. So we have y prime plus 2y is equal to 1. And that's for x is greater than 0 but less than 1. And so p of x is equal to 2, g of x is 1, and mu of x is equal to e raised to the integral of 2 at dx, and that's just equal to e to the 2x, so that's mu. So, our solution is y of x equals 1 over mu of x, which is one uh, e to the minus 2x. And then you have mu of x gx, so mu of x is uh, 2x. And g of x is 1, so we have x dx plus uh, c e to the minus 2x. And... Um, what we have here, we're going to substitute u equals 2x, du on 2 equals dx. So when we do the integration, we have e to the minus 2x times e to the 2x on 2 plus c e to the minus 2x. And that's equal to 1 half plus c e to the minus 2x. But remember, uh, there's an initial condition. Uh, we didn't state that at first, but we said y of 0 is equal to 0. So when x is 0, we have y of 0 equals 0 equals 1 half plus c. And c then is equal to minus 1 half, which then yields a solution of y of x equals 1 half minus 1 half e to the minus 2x. And you can do a little more algebra. And that's your solution. That's your explicit solution. But that's only on this interval. We have another case where y our x is greater than 1. So, what is it, what is y when x is 1? So, we say y of 1 is equal to 1 half minus 1 on 2 e to the minus 2. And then we have 1 half well, well, we'll leave it at that. We don't need to 
that's uh, that's the case of y equals one. But that's something that we got to retain. So that's something we must remember. Okay. So now we look at the second interval. Okay. The second. The second interval is x greater than 1, g of x equals 0. So we have y prime plus 2y equals 0. And that means that y is equal to y of x is equal to c e to the minus 2x. But what do we need? We need to solve for c explicitly. And we had done that for y um, where x equals 1. And that was 1 half minus one-half e to the minus two. And that is equal to c e to the minus two. So c equals, equals, okay, uh, e to the two times one-half minus one half e to the minus two, and that is one half e to the two minus one. So then that's our coefficient, and we have for the second interval for x greater than one y of x is equal to one-half e squared minus one e to the minus two x. And let me just check that out. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the solution for the second interval. So we have a two-parted we have a two-parted solution. We have the, the first part, where y of x for x, whoops, x is less than 1 but greater and equal to 0 and x greater than 1. And this was 1 half 1 minus e to the minus 2x. Just a bad memory. <laughs> so that's our, that's our uh, solution to y for the first interval and our solution to y for the second interval. So this is the first, uh, this is a and b. And that's, those are the solutions to our two cases. Now we have a similar kind of a corollary problem where we have a different condition we still have the problem we got y prime plus P of x, y, is equal to 0. 
where for the interval x is less than 1 but greater than 0, we have p of x, which is different. p of x is 2. And then for all other x greater than 1, p of x is equal to 1. g of x, in this case, is always equal to 0. And so we have uh, two cases again, but slightly different because we're varying uh, the function p of x. So we have in the first first uh, case, we have y prime plus 2y equals 0. So we have uh, p of x equals 2, g of x is 0, u of x is equal to e to the 2x. And you know by now that that's, it's just basically equal to this. That's how you get mu of x. So y is equal to c e to the minus 2x. Um, the one thing I didn't state here is the initial condition. So we have been given an initial condition of y of 0 equals 1. So when x is 0, y of 0 equals 1 equals c. And uh, so c equals 1. y equals e to the minus 2x. But remember, we have a second condition, a second interval, x greater than 1. So let's solve for, whoops, let's solve for uh, x greater than 1. So let's uh, pick up at the point where the function's going to be 1. So y of 1 is equal to e to the minus 2. Okay, so now let's look at the second interval, y, uh, which is x greater than 1. That means p of x is 1, so we have a different um, a different uh, equation, differential equation to solve. We have y prime plus y equals 0. So y is going to be equal to uh, c e to the minus x. But y of 1 is equal to e to the minus 2 equals c e to the minus 1. So e, c is equal to e to the minus 1. And then our solution is y of x is equal to e to the minus 1, e to the minus x, and that is equal to e to the minus x plus 1. So that's our second solution. So this is the answer for b, and this is the answer for part a. So we have our two solutions. And that is how to go about solving for discontinuities. You have to have the conditions explicitly stated. Whoops, what did I do there? That was strange. Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at a special set of equations um, 
called the Bernoulli equations, not the fluid dynamics, um, Daniel Bernoulli's equations are a little more complex. That's the, that's for fluid dynamics. Uh, but we're going to be looking at what they call uh, the Bernoulli equations for Jacob Bernoulli. There were two brothers, Johann and Jacob Bernoulli, who were instrumental in early calculus. So we're going to be looking at differential equations of the form y prime plus p of x y equals q of x y to the n. Now, in this case, um, we have a nonlinear equation. It can be made linear if um, n is zero, then we have y prime plus p of x y equals q of x and then we have n equals 1 where we have y prime plus p of x y equals q of x y and then we can combine them y prime uh, plus p of x minus q of x y equals zero. So now we we've been solving equations of this type and uh, this type. And so these nonlinear equations equation uh, can be made linear under those two conditions. So In fact, the first two problems, uh, the first problem is solve uh, Bernoulli's equation when n equals 0 and n equals 1. So in this case, we have um, n equals 0. We just have the typical, this is, whoops. We have the the case that we've been solving a where when n is zero we have y prime plus p of x y equals q of x but q of x takes the place of g of x and this is for n equals 0 n equals 0 and y to the 0 is 1 so our solution then is y of x equals 1 over mu of x and that's mu of x, q of x, dx plus c over mu of x with y of 0 equals whatever, a. And a can take any form. 
in the second case, we would have y prime plus p of x y equals q of x y because we have n equals 1 and y to the n would be y to the 1, which is y. So then we've reduced this to y prime p of q. Whoops, what am I doing? p of x minus q of x y equals zero. So g of x equals zero. P of x, well, what we've been dealing with as p of x is going to be this middle thing that we're going to call uh, f of x. So we have p of x equals f of x, and let's uh, clean up the board a little bit, and mu of x is equal to e to the integral of f of x dx where f of x equals p of x minus q of x. And then we can solve again. We have y of x equals c um, e what am I doing? C times, or C divided by mu of x. Whatever that comes out to be. Because there's no g of x. g of x is zero. So y equals one over mu x times 0 dx plus c on mu of x. And so this term drops out, and that's our solution for this case, because g of x is 0. And I don't know if they have a general solution for this particular one, 16a. Let's see if they've got it. No, they don't provide the solution in the back for it because it's, it's a generalization like we just showed right here. So um, in this case, We have this solution, and in the second case, we have this solution. Now, it says use the method of 16b. Uh, to solve each of the following differential equations. So, uh, method of 16b, show that if n is not equal to 0 or 1, then the substitution v uh, equals y, 1 minus n, reduces Bernoulli's equation to a linear equation. All right, so let's take a look at what they are talking about. We're going to take a look at special 
cases of nonlinear equations. First order, and we've been given p of x um, times y equals q of x y to the n. And we've already looked at the cases n equals 0 and n equals 1. But what do we do for higher order n? Well, Gottlieb uh, Leibniz, um, the co-inventor of calculus with uh, Newton, had devised a solution to this type um, of differential equation. And now, again, it only applies to certain types, but it... It takes nonlinear equations uh, where n is greater than 1 and uh, can convert them into linear equations by taking a substitution of v equals y raised to the 1 minus n. So if we were given equa an equation x squared y prime plus 2x y minus y to the third equals zero. We got a problem because this is a nonlinear uh, differential equation. But we can use Leibniz um, substitution to be able to solve this. So let's get this into a little better form and we'll bring y over to the other side of the equation. So we got, and divide through by x squared. So we have y prime plus two on x, y equals y to the third on x squared. Now, now we have n equals three in this case. So in this, particular equation, we would take v equals y to the 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. So v prime, prime is equal to minus 2 um, y to the minus 3 um, y prime. Or we could do it this way, v to the uh, minus one half is equal to y. And then we have minus one half v to the minus three halves, v pi, uh, prime equals y prime. And we could do that, we can throw that into the equation, so we have minus minus one half v to the minus three halves v prime plus two over x y is v minus one half and that's equal to v to the minus three halves over x squared. And now all we have to do is multiply through by v to the three halves and we've got ourselves uh, in shape. So let's do that. We've got one half v prime plus two on x v equals 1 on x squared. Now our final touch is multiplying through by minus 2. So we got v prime minus 4 on x, v equals minus 4 on x. I'm sorry, not minus 4. Uh, I'm being a little sloppy here. That's minus 2. Minus 2 on x squared. There we go. That's our 
new linear equation. And uh, you can see that it's in linear form, where p of x is equal to minus 4 on x, and g of x is equal to minus 2 on x squared, and mu of x is equal to e to the minus 4, 1 on x dx, and that's equal to uh, e to the negative 4 ln x, but then we just uh, do a little algebra and we got mu of x is equal to 1. Uh, we got e to the ln of x to the minus 4, and that's equal to x to the minus 4. So then we choose, uh, we use our formula. We have y is equal to uh, 1 on mu of x, so that's x to the 4th times mu of x, g of x, so g of x, we've got x, uh, let's see, minus 2 on x squared, so that's minus x to the minus 6 dx plus c x to the fourth. I'm a little tired right now. My eyes are blurry. x to the minus 3 dx. So that's going to be x to the minus 2 because we go up 1 and divided by minus 2. So uh, if we took y prime is equal to minus 2 on minus 2 x to the minus 3. So that, that gives us what we want. So well, let's, we've got x, x to the fourth times minus two times x to the minus five on minus five plus c x to the fourth. And we have two fifths, one on x plus c x to the fourth y of x. And that should be our solution. So let's get that. Oh, that's not y, though. I'm sorry. That's v. V, 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 V. So that's V of X. V of X. So this is the square root of Y. So Y of X then is the square root of this function. So then y of x is equal to this raised to the one-half. And that's our solution. 
So we, we were able to convert a nonlinear equation into a linear equation right there. And that linear equation was now solvable, and this is our solution. So that's pretty nifty. So sometimes there are uh, little ways around uh, what appear to be um, intractable problems. We looked at the general form of what we called the Bernoulli. equations, differential equations, their first order, nonlinear, but they convert to linear using a V substitution equals Y to the 1 minus N. <clears throat> and our first problem was given as X squared our first explicit example. Whoops. Minus y to the third equals zero. Now you can see that's not linear. Uh, we do a little algebra manipulation and we go y prime plus 2 on x, y equals y to the third on x squared. Okay, now what we choose is uh, v equals we got n equals 3, so v equals y to the minus 2. So v to the minus 1 half equals y. And minus 1 half, v to the minus 3 half power, v prime equals y prime. Now we put that back into the equation, and we got minus 1 half v to the minus three halves v prime uh, plus two on x and y is v to the minus one half and that's equal to y to the third so that's v to the minus three halves on x squared so P of X, um, before we do anything, let's multiply through by minus 2 V to the 3 halves. And what that gives us is V prime minus 4 um, on X. V equals minus 2 on x squared. Now that's a linear differential equation. And we have P of x is equal to uh, minus 4 on x and we have g of x equals minus 2 on x squared and mu of x is equal to e to the minus 4 1 on x dx and that's equal to e to the minus 4 lin x and that's equal oh where is that <laughs> p 
people wanting more money. Um, uh, this is equal to e raised to the ln of x to the minus 4, which is just x to the minus 4. So v of x is equal to x to the fourth times, now we have x to the minus 4 times minus 2 on x squared dx plus cx to the 4. And we'll clean this up a little bit. Equals minus 2x to the 4th times x to the minus 6 dx plus c x to the 4th. Now, all we have to do is this integration, and we have minus 2x to the 4th times x to the minus 5 over minus 5 plus c x to the 4th, which gives us, this is v of x, remember? And that gives us 2 fifths 1 on x plus c of x to the 4th. But remember now, we have y equals v to the minus 1 half. So v of x what we have to do to get y of x is invert and take the square root. So we have 2 fifths x plus c x to the fourth raised to the minus one half. And that's our answer for that particular problem. So this is it. And I, we've already done that uh, in the previous video. Uh, this, by the way, even though I tacked it on, it is a separate video. The method the the actually Leibniz, he was the uh, co-inventor or discoverer of calculus. Along with Newton. And what, we, what we're doing is a method that Leibniz found. It's called a V substitution for Y raised to the 1 minus N for these Bernoulli equations. And their first order. Just to keep that all in perspective, because again, these problems are very specific. So we're going to look at y prime equals. Now we got, we're given epsilon y minus sigma y squared. And we're treating epsilon and sigma as constants that are greater than zero. So we have y prime minus epsilon y equals minus sigma 
y squared. And so v is y to the minus 1. So v to the minus 1 equals y. Minus v to the minus 2 v prime equals y prime. And we are set for substitution. So we have minus v to the minus 2 v prime minus epsilon and v to the minus 1 equals minus sigma and v to the minus 2. And now, if we multiply through by minus v squared, we get a linear equation. So we have v prime plus epsilon v equals minus sigma, and that's it. Now it's linear in v. And we have P, uh, this is epsilon. So P of X is epsilon. G of X is minus sigma. Mu of X is equal to E. E to the epsilon X. So, V equals E to the minus epsilon X times E to the epsilon X and G is sigma or minus sigma minus sigma DX plus C e to the minus epsilon x. That's our solution. Now we have to do the integration. So we have minus sigma e to the minus epsilon x times e to the epsilon x on epsilon plus C, e to the minus epsilon x. These cancel out. So we have v to the x is equal to, now, there's something here that I need to address. We got something here with the negative signs that I need to make sure I've got right. Is what I've got here is minus sigma on epsilon plus c e to the minus epsilon x. And this, I just want to make sure I'm right. With I multiply through with minus v squared. Ah, uh, that turns this positive. Okay, so... I made a mistake right here. That's positive. And so that's positive, and this is positive. That's it. That's where you got to be careful with your signs. So that's the solution in V of X. But remember, V of X, V of X was, um, oops. 
we've got uh, y equals 1 over v. So, in order to get this to be y of x, we have to sigma on epsilon plus c e to the minus epsilon x all raised to the negative 1 power. And that should be our solution, and it is. That's correct. You have to be careful at every step to make sure that you don't screw up with a minus sign like that, like I did. So that makes a, an important difference in the solution. So we, we were given that problem, and we solved it, and on, whoops, on to the next. Y prime equals epsilon y minus sigma y to the third. Again, these are Bernoulli equations, and they're not Daniel Bernoulli, but Jacob. I think is J Jacob Bernoulli. He was either the father or uncle, I forget which, to Daniel. Jacob. I think he was the father. Jacob and his brother, Johann, were both major contributors to calculus. To the development of calculus. Okay, so in this case, n equals 3. Let's look at the equation slightly differently. y prime minus epsilon y equals minus sigma y to the third. And we have v equals y to the minus 2. So v to the minus one half equals y and minus one half v to the minus three halves v prime equals y prime. And substituting that all in, we have minus one half v to the minus three halves v prime plus epsilon on 2 v to the minus oh what am I doing no 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 I gotta be careful my mind is drifting Okay, minus epsilon, now v to the minus one half, you gotta be careful with these things, equals minus sigma v to the minus three halves. Now we're multiplying through by minus two v to the three halves. So this becomes V prime plus two epsilon V equals two sigma two sigma. And that should be it.
that's our linear equation. P of x is 2 epsilon. G of x is 2 sigma. Mu of x equals 2 epsilon dx. And that's equal to e to the 2 epsilon x. All right. Now, we have all the pieces in place. And we've got v of x equals e to the minus 2 epsilon x times... 2 sigma e to the 2 epsilon x dx plus c e to the minus 2 epsilon x. And so we have v of x equals e to the minus 2 epsilon x times 2 sigma e to the 2 epsilon x on 2 epsilon plus c e to the minus 2 epsilon x. Now these exponents cancel in the first term and we have v of x equals Sigma on epsilon plus C E to the minus two epsilon X. But now we gotta put back to Y. Y, remember, is V to the minus one half. So we have Y of X is equal to Sigma on epsilon plus C E to the minus 2 epsilon X to the minus 1 half. And let's go check the solution. Yes. That is our solution. This guy right here. There we go. Now, they've given us one more problem to solve. Okay, so the last problem they have given us is y prime equals epsilon y minus f of x, y to the third, and epsilon greater than zero. So here we go. We got y prime minus epsilon y equals minus f of x, y to the third. So n equals three, v equals y to the minus 2, v to the 1 half, minus 1 half, equals y, minus 1 half, v to the minus 3 halves, v prime equals y prime. Now we substitute, minus 1 half, v to the minus 3 halves, v prime, minus epsilon v to the minus one half equals minus f of x v to the minus three halves. Now we multiply by negative two v to the three halves. 
So that's important. So we multiply each term by that, and we got V prime plus 2 epsilon V equals 2 F of X. And that's our linear equation with uh, P of X equals 2 epsilon G of X equals 2 F of X and mu equals e to the 2 epsilon dx equals e to the 2 epsilon x. So v of x is equal to e to the minus 2 epsilon x multiplied by the multiplied by the integral of mu of x and g of x. g of x is 2 f of x plus c e to the minus 2 epsilon x. All right, now, here we go. We clean it up a little bit. e to the minus 2 epsilon x. e to the 2 epsilon x f of x dx plus c e to the minus 2 epsilon x but that's v of x y is v to the minus 1 half so y of x is equal to now let's pull out the common denominator e to the minus 2 epsilon x times 2 e to the 2 epsilon x f of x dx plus c raised to the minus one half. And that is the result. Yep, that's it. And that's our solution right there. Okay, and that's it for the four problems that they gave us in the Bernoulli equations, nonlinear. And the little trick to make them linear. So... With that, we'll move on to the next topic.